Hello, my name is Evan Perkins, and today I'm speaking with Kevin Bennett Moore about his current exhibition at Gallery Cafes titled Safe in My Garden. Kevin Bennett Moore is a recent graduate with departmental honors from the Massachusetts College of Art and Design. His self-portrait based projects largely discuss queerness through utilizing the past to reflect upon contemporary culture and politics. Bennett Moore writes, influenced by my own queer experience and ideals of mid-century American culture, the images in this work investigate a familiarly domestic environment that also alludes to the enigmatic. Through initially making work about one's control over their environment, I'm able to create a safe space for narrative to unfold, purposely diverting from what may be considered conventional representation. Kevin, thank you for taking the time to speak with me today. Thanks, Evan. Your work often employs the visual languages of performance, film, and mid-century Americana to explore cultural representations of queerness, gender, and masculinity through a particularly American frame of thinking. How are these investigations of the past linked to your work being made in the present, and what ideologies of queerness are you looking to not only deconstruct, but expand upon? I would say that the ideas that I'm generally critiquing in the work are the ideas of perfection, one of my biggest influences would be Mad Men because they do such a good job of showing the world as it is and the perfections, particularly if you look at the Draper family, you might think, okay, this is a perfect family. But as you go into the Draper family, you realize that the Draper family is far from perfect. So even looking at photos of the past, you can see like the perfect sidewalk because everything was new, perfect sidewalk, perfect car, perfect house. And then what happens inside of these spaces most likely are not perfect. And I think that we as a society get lost in the idea that things were perfect back then, whereas why aren't they living up to that standard now? And then the idea of perfecting yourself internally to then look how you want to look externally. Why do we have to continue to uphold this facade. But the alternative for the idea of perfection for me is where are the cracks in this reality that's being placed in front of you? Each image is kind of supposed to hold a nice, perfect visual. And then you're supposed to be able to kind of like uncover the cracks within that image. Then I think the space that is then created that I would consider safe is the fact that we can choose or we cannot choose to question how queerness is being accessed in this time period. This image on screen right now teeters the line between perfect reality and the slip ups between the past and then how we could see queerness being like as a free open thing in this space because visually when you enter this image, you're seeing this wallpaper and this scene, but then if you kind of look into the television, my character, I guess, in this picture is wearing this beauty mask. And the image is called Satellite of Love because I was thinking about any form of reflection is such a personal experience for me. And I think a part of my queer identity is like, I'll pass something. And like in this experience, I'm looking at myself through the television, which becomes my satellite. Hearing you push up against some of these ideas of perfection, to me, that's referencing back to this time in the American 50s in the mid-century time, which your work kind of lives in a context of, where those are where the ideas of the two and a half children and a white picket fence and a family dog came into play where the gender roles were restrictive and there became these veneers of perfection and what does it mean to be masculine? What does it mean to be feminine? And there were very strict silos into where you fell as one or the other. And I think you're using this work as a way to push up against those binaries that were not created, but I think more so reinforced during that time. And you're highlighting the fact of this messiness in the middle, which I think is really important. It's something that I think about in my work and what I'm interested in pictures in general is you're not offering us a binary of right and wrong, good and bad, all these different things, but you're kind of, you're scratching at the wallpaper to try and find this place in the middle where... I think most of our experiences and realities lie. Yeah, I'm happy that you mentioned the roles that men and women played, especially in the time of like mid-century American culture. But I think where the influence really comes into play is the films of the time. And I mean, the fashion of the time as well, because if you look back at what media people were consuming, it was almost as if gender 
played a role in a way that could never really play a role today. I would say any dance sequence with Fred Astaire would be something that is a, a huge influence because the way that the men were performing, I'm not meaning to critique the femininity of these men in this time period at all. I think the representation is actually really awesome because I don't think at the time, I mean, I didn't live it, but it didn't really feel like people were critiquing that kind of energy at the time, the way they would critique that energy today. Something interesting is all of the clothing that I'm originally influenced are men's mid-century clothing and how originally I would see a sweater or something. Maybe a cis straight man would never wear this today, but like a cis straight man in the 50s would pick this up and it would be considered masculine. So that was like a jumping off point when entering the work in this realm, because if you look at any 1950s film, the men are often way more effeminate than men are portrayed today in film. So the, the interesting conflict that I have just throughout historically and maybe even like history of fashion is the more we are able to come out and live freely, the more fragile masculinity gets. So I kind of feel like I'm exploring that idea in the past, your work has primarily included self-portraits, but in this body of work, you've branched out to including portraits containing characters and other people that exist outside of yourself. What inspired this shift to the work and how do you approach photographing yourself versus when you include others in the images? I say all the time that making work about myself, with myself, of myself, is always easier than making work with other people. And I think a big push for that was to like expand on this is not only to make bigger scenes with more people in them, but to push myself to direct other people the way I can just easily direct myself. And then also it gets fun to use other people rather than yourself all the time. Through including other characters, you're able to add more complex interpersonal relationships into the work as well, which may be something that you haven't addressed in the work with just yourself. What ideas are you able to gain access to through including other people that you may not be able to have explored just through yourself? Yeah, I think it opens up a lot more because I think when I photograph myself and there's one figure in the scene, it more or less becomes about what's happening, not only in the scene with that person or like internally, but what's happening beyond the image, what's happening before the image, what's happening after the image. And I think that with this picture in particular, my choice of characters was solely based on a personal experience. I named this photo Six O'Clock Mass because growing up we initially would go to Six O'Clock Mass and ditch out early to get to the grocery store. So it becomes a ritual for me and then I feel like this figure in the foreground was supposed to be a little bit more confrontational. The one that was directing the scene in a way. I mean, it all depends on how you would interpret interpret something like this. But for me, it pays tribute to like an experience I've had. And I think my goal would be for somebody to look at it and potentially share that experience or interpret it a different way. The approach with one other person, I think, is very similar to taking a self-portrait. A lot of the time, I guess I'm thinking about how I would want to look in this picture, but really, I would say, let's put somebody else in. And I think that casting other people can be really fun especially for this picture. Malcolm like said he had like this fun hair going on and I was just like let's use you like let's do a picture. It changes up the dynamic. It also changes up kind of how we look at the work because we're not just looking at maybe me interpreting other people or dressing up as other people but a whole new face. Yeah. So I think in this work in particular, I shy away from showing my own face. I think the lawnmower is like the most of my face you really see in the shot. I was trying to make it not just solely about me portraying other people, but the other characters that we see are the ones we see most of their face because they're not me. And like introducing the fact that there are other people living in this space as well. The scenes that you create are both somehow familiar and cinematic at the same time. 
So I'm interested in hearing about how you create the characters that exist in these environments and how film influences your work. Looking at these images, light definitely plays a role in that. So if you could also touch on that. I would say that light is the number one driver at this point behind what makes the work cinematic. The storyline is definitely influenced by film, but I think the reason why I stayed or geared closer to photography was what happens before, during, and after, and the space that you can allow for people to interpret rather than necessarily telling people what to think exactly. I would say that I am influenced by the real world first. So a huge part of the work is just going out and having lived experiences and then finding characters out in public and trying to figure out how I could interpret that into a picture. And then that coincides with looking at film and thinking about how somebody who's created a film can also come up with these figures and then interpret them in the way they want to be interpreted. The images of people kind of become more about the way the figure is placed rather than the way the figure might be living on their own. The film influence is definitely how can I remove this person from who they are and then project what ideas I want them to portray in this. And I think that plays a huge role in film because and we know that actors and actresses all the time talk about becoming the role. You're not you when you're playing whatever character you're playing. You are playing that character. So I think my role in that is trying to get them to give me what kind of character I want them to be. In your artist statement, you talk about having familiar domestic scenes, but having them lean towards the enigmatic. I think one of the strengths of the work is how you take these familiar scenes that should be read as incredibly banal, incredibly commonplace, and through specific posing and gesturing, and then specifically with the addition of the light that you choose to use, it completely transforms the scene into something where maybe the mechanics of what is going on is commonplace, but there are these intangible aspects of the frame that are activated that, like you said, bring up more questions than answers. And that's something that is present throughout the whole work is you're, you're allowing the viewer to almost bring their own baggage to the to the images and bring their own interpretations of what's going on. That's something that I enjoy in photographs is when they ask more questions and they do provide answers. Yeah, I want people to bring their baggage. I think that the lighting is something that is so fun to play with, especially in like an image like this, you can make it look like you're anywhere at any time. And that also is kind of part of cinema as well. Something that may be, I guess, mundane or like things that might be happening in the domestic space, it becomes more about what's happening beyond the frame. The work is embraced by a backdrop of domesticity, primarily existing in the home or adjacent exteriors. There appears to be this balance between perceived safety of one's home and the drama that unfolds behind closed doors. We briefly talked about this earlier with the satellite of love picture and how you're interested in these ideas of perfection. How does the home play a role in this work? I think the home and the domestic space plays a huge role, especially in this particular body of work. I was definitely exploring the ideas of imperfection behind closed doors. I think we can try to fix things that may be unfixable, but we will still care for them in ways that maybe they shouldn't be cared for. The idea of this picture is about the performativity behind trying in a way. I don't know if that makes sense, but this shirt is ruined but we're going to continue to hold on to the idea of things being a certain way when in reality they may not be. There's a sense of continually providing love and care to something that to the world seems to be useless. That provides a tenderness to the images as well, where in some of the other images, like this one here, the interior scenes, the domestic scenes, I'm not going to say they seem a little bit sinister, but maybe they, do, maybe they mm -hmm. do seem a little bit sinister. There's something looming in the pictures that is intangible, but very present. And the image that we just were on contrasts that idea. Yeah, I would say that 
this image is probably on the more sinister side. When I was making these low light pictures, I was thinking about those really long drawn out days, the summer. I think the whole body of work, I really wanted to feel kind of like one long space that was just continuing. Sun was setting for hours. I think this picture sits in that space for me where it doesn't have to be pretty and it's a scene that no one else could particularly see but me or whoever else may be in the house. Like I, I kind of wanted to make it about letting people in as well as keeping people out. You talk about this work providing an environment of control and safety for not only the characters in the images, but also the audience. What are you hoping that the safety provides for those engaging with the work? I think when I talk about the safety that it provides was really about my own way of making the images. I think a lot of the response was to being at home during the pandemic. Making photos in general has always been primarily about control of the environment. And then on top of that practice that I already have been working on was this new virus forcing me to seek other ways of safety. So my goal would be to find safety in making images, but also maybe somebody else could find safety in the ideas or the emotions that they would leave when looking at the images. You're allowing people in to engage with the fact that there is imperfection in our in our home lives and just letting people know that they're not alone. I think that that's something that, yeah. I think that that is something that comes across in the work is that whether or not you have this perceived sense of perfection in your home or whether it's something maybe a little bit more filled with a little bit more turmoil, that people are not alone in that situation. And while these are staged and created scenes, you're inviting us to engage with them and, you know, have them reflect what a home experience may be for some of us. Yeah, I think that the home for me has always been a safe space. And that definitely plays into the work, especially when it becomes about performance and how we can perform in the home or outside of the home and how maybe those things shift. And then the idea that we're letting people in on is maybe that like a character can be whatever you want the character to be. This image, you could put whatever you want to put on it. I think a lot of the images kind of, especially the interiors, make it okay to not necessarily be okay. There's turmoil happening everywhere. And then it's okay to look at your own turmoil, even though there might be turmoil happening outside. Well, Kevin, thank you so much for Thanks. taking the time to speak with me today. It's It was great to hear a little bit more about the images and the characters that you're able to create. So I thank you for taking the time to speak with me and not only talk about the work, talk about yourself as well. That's always something that it, <laughs> some, sometimes it's easy to just talk about the work, but this work is linked to yourself as well. Yeah. So I thank you for doing that.